Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh, Alex, uh, how do you think you're going to die? Just out of curiosity. Uh, slowly. Yep, I can see that happening, yeah. so, But wouldn't it be great if you could die laughing? Um, that sounds painful. That's as, as much of an icebreaker as I can get to with you today. But good news, on the show today, we have Craig Campbell back on to talk about a new game that he has coming to Kickstarter, Die Laughing. Craig, thank you for being on. Hi, hi guys. Thank you for having me. Um, yes. Yeah, this is this is not a die slowly game. This is this game plays pretty quickly, so Okay. okay. <laughs> good. Good. Like when I think about die laughing, uh I figure there's probably a lot of story behind that. I'd also wonder why I'd want to do it. So please explain to me why I want to die laughing in the first place. <laughs> um, well, it's a it's a role-playing game, a tabletop game. uses dice, and it's uh, kind of a short play. It plays in about an hour or two, and uh, it's GM-less, um, although you could argue that it's kind of one of those GM-less games where the GMing responsibility is sort of shared by everybody. Like, everybody will get a chance to kind of sort of GM a little bit, but we can talk about that in a minute. Die Laughing is called that because it's a horror comedy game. Um, in the game, you're all playing characters in a horror comedy movie, and everybody's going to die. Uh, there might be a survivor, but no guarantees. And it's really a question of uh, when your character dies and how funny you can make it. And uh, once your character is gone, uh, there's a number of things that happen that keep you involved in the story. So you still have something to do. The big the big part of it is that you become a producer on the movie and you uh, have mechanics in the game that are, allow you to continue to influence the story and kind of mess around with stuff to make the movie better um, right. and to uh, to uh, plague and uh, consternate the uh, the other players who are remaining with their characters. Mm. Yeah. Do I have to make the movie better? You don't have to. OK, good. <laughs> I'd like it if you made it funnier. Oh, okay. That that works too. No, knowing Nathan, he's gonna make it worse, and everyone set's gonna die. Yeah, and and for realsies, not even in the movie. <laughs> it's just a hazard all around. So so this is like uh, if if I imagine I'm on the set of a B movie, I'm um, I'm kind of like trying to make this come to fruition, and that's sort of what die laughing revolves around. Right. All, all the monsters that are available in the game, every time you play, you, you use a different monster. Um, there's a whole bunch of different character archetypes, so you can switch up, different, play different characters, have different groups of characters. So it's got a replayability factor of just kind of trying all sorts of different things. Each of the monsters is kind of like a spoof version of like a classic horror monster. Uh, um, yes. There's the, you know, the mad slasher with a lot of weird weapons. Um, there's uh, the crazy clown. <laughs> you guys have seen the uh, the monster sheet for. Oh, I'm looking at it right now, and it's terrifying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's uh, there's a couple of different kinds of ghosts. There's uh, a sexy vampire. Um, there's dismemberment goblins. Perfect. Gi giant irradiated insect. So you can kind of do that 1950s, 1960s uh, Cold War nuclear scare. Giant monster, you know, giant insect kind of thing. Um, there's a whole bunch of them, um, so you can kind of uh, mix and match and, and play all sorts of weird monsters. And each monster has kind of a few unique things about them, but they are otherwise there to to uh, kill all your characters in most gruesome and hilarious fashion. Oh, OK. Uh, do they have like a, a kill off kind of thing? Like they're all in the same spot at the same time and they have to go battle royale on the, the poor kids at the camp. <laughs> who just get, who just went there thinking that they'd have fun in the sun, and now they're now all the monsters are coming in at the same time. Uh, it's really one monster at a time. If you really wanted to do oh, okay. multiple monsters, I never thought about that. You could probably just alternate back and forth between different monster uh, pages right. and just have you know, or when whenever the monster attacks, whenever the the rules of the game tells you a monster attack, you could just decide right. whoever's the director at the time could say, no, it's this monster this time. Uh, that's yeah. perfectly acceptable, I suppose. Right. Um, but the the game is set up such that there's um, basically an act and a scene structure. Everybody has a character. In any given scene, one of the characters is the lead character. That character's player is the lead player. The person to their right is the director for that scene. So their character doesn't get involved in the scene. The director rolls dice um, on a table in the book. 
that gets you um, a prompt for a scene. And it's broken up by Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. So Act 1 is kind of like a lot of setting things up, introducing characters, um, developing relationships. Act 2 is about escalating all of the problems. And then Act 3 is like a lot of monster attacks um, and and different ways to deal with the monster and to uh, resolve the story. And um, then there's there's triggers. There's certain things that happen that bump you to get you from Act 1 to Act 2 to Act 3 as you play. Um, So the director sets things up. The, the lead player decides who they want in the scene with them for that scene. And uh, then they play out the scene and then they make some uh, everybody at the end of a scene makes everybody who's in the scene makes a trait check. And, uh, and that determines some things about uh, how things move forward. Yeah, I guess when I was uh, thinking about like Battle Royale mode, I, w- I, w- I guess I was thinking like, you know, like Freddy and Jason or Alien v. Predator. And like, wouldn't that be intriguing? to just have them kind of uh, face off against it. I guess I just wanted to be the crazy clown. I guess that's really <laughs> what I was looking for. But Alex will probably tell me that I already am one, so I shouldn't. <laughs> well, there goes my one-liner. There... <laughs> my, new, my new thing is stealing all of Alex's lines. <laughs> there, are, there are horror movies where, you know, one of the characters uh, kind of snaps and, and kind of loses it. And, you know, it's the game is very narrative- narratively open um sure. so you can take your characters in a lot of different directions just kind of you know you, you use the framework of the scene to kind of get from the the setup to to resolve what the scene's supposed to be about like it might be a scene that's about an argument or it might be a monster attack or whatever but within the scene itself you can kind of do what you want and kind of float around through through different things and everybody who's playing a character in that scene will contribute to that so I mean, if you're fighting the the crazy clown, and you know, late in the story, you want your character kind of snap off and start painting himself with, with clown makeup and doing all kinds of nutty stuff, I'm I'm not going to stop you because yeah. eventually the crazy clown's going to kill you, um, yeah. or or you're going to be the character that survives and and has to be put into a psychiatric hospital. Oh, <laughs> hey, you know which of these scenarios do you think is going to work out better for you? But it is important to note. So my, my goal is not necessarily to live. Like it's very unlikely that that's going to happen. No, the buy-in when you play the game is the character is going to die. Perfect. Okay. Well, that's the assumption. That is something I excel at in games. (laughs) Dying. This is just right up my alley. Um, But if I can uh, die in a really amusing and fun way, I mean, that's, that's really the, the big part right here. I mean, yeah, that's kind of what we're that's kind of what I went for with the game was like everybody plays role playing games for there's a lot of reasons to play them. And there's a lot of things to remember about them. And one of the things that you remember in any given role playing game are those moments. Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, the, the moment where your character dies in some heroic fashion or in some really stupid way, sometimes those are the moments that are memorable. Those are the stories that you tell your friends that you share with your group and with you talk about at conventions and all that stuff. Sure. Um, so I'm just building a game where, you know, hey, have you have you ever played? Have you been playing role playing games for 20 years and don't have a great death story? Here's <laughs> the game for you. If you've been playing role playing games for 20 years and you don't have a great death story, I'm I feel sad. A little <laughs> bit, right? Sad for you. It means you probably got a DM who doesn't want their players to ever die. <laughs> They're immortal. You well, and miss- it depends on what kind of what kind of games you're playing. There's plenty of RPGs out there that are, you know, that de- death is not a big part of the game. What's most terrifying to you, Craig? What's terrifying to me? Something that's not in the game because it doesn't really present itself well as a monster. Oh, okay. Um, I'm a horror movie fan from way back. I've been watching horror movies since I was like, you know, 11 or 12 years old. I, I enjoy horror movies and horror literature and, and everything in a lot of different for a lot of different reasons. Um, and there isn't too much that really grosses me out or makes me not want to watch. There are certain things that can happen in a movie. I have a thing with needles, oh. um, especially around the eyes. Uh huh. Yeah. That's a little bit of a problem. So that's that's not strictly a monster. That's like, you know, unless you had like a needle monster, which is a little terrifying. Um, but one of the things, yeah, those needles aren't coming after you. <laughs> true, true. Like, not like a, yeah, like a, true. a cactuar, a cactuar kind of is like that, right? Final <laughs> Fantasy. Sure. Those are very really scary, Nathan. Have you ever battled one? <laughs> I said, I said they're not scary, I, I, not, they're deadly. not deadly. Deadly and scary are kind of are interchangeable for me, but but okay. The type of movie that actually gets to me, and they don't always qualify strictly. Usually, they're called thrillers. Um, they don't necessarily always qualify as a horror movie, but it's um, movies about disease. 
Yes. Like, uh, and not like, you know, rage virus or zombieism or something like that, but like literally like, you know, movies like contagion and stuff like that, where like that could happen. Mm-hmm. And you go, and these characters, you know, die these prolonged, um, really suffering deaths that th- those are, I have to be in the right kind of frame of mind to watch those. Whereas a horror movie, I can watch like, you know, I can wake up in the morning and watch a horror movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Monster of the week. That's not too bad. See, so what you, can, least... what you really need is a plague doctor as a monster. Oh, man. Yeah, somebody mm. going around spreading disease. Yep. Oh. Purposely spreading disease. Yeah, that's, that's icky. That's... I'm not a fan. <laughs> no. He does, it, he does it with needles in the oh! eye. <laughs> You're evil, Alex. <laughs> Only you... this time of year. <laughs> Only this time of year. I beg to differ on that as well. I think it's most of the time. Okay, I have to say though, like uh, Crazy Clown, which is the one I'm looking at right now. Yeah, that's the PG-13 version of that. That's the version that we put in the Kickstarter video. In in the book, it's uh, you know, can I can I drop an f bomb here? Sure, yeah, yeah, it's that fucking clown. <laughs> <laughs> and everything oh, okay. on the page is, you know, fucking this and fucking that. <laughs> Perfect. I like um, that. Which is a which is a little there's little homages in there. And if you have seen uh, the most recent uh, the, the recent it movie, not okay. the, the miniseries, but the movie itself, that fucking clown is a phrase that has meaning to you. If you've seen that movie. Yeah, there's there's all sorts of little little nods. Uh, both will haunt my dreams forever. <laughs> so <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So I think that was the intent. That, right? was, that, was, that was at least part of the plan, yes. <laughs> if we break down the the actual casting call card, uh, it has the monster's name, has the monster's title. Uh, of course, I would imagine the monster, the movie title is pretty much uh, stay away from the clown. Uh, well, the movie title, that's actually something that's built into gameplay, is oh. whoever survives gets to name the movie. Oh, okay, so we don't find out the title until the end. Yeah. So it's like it's like old school. You can think of it like old school uh, movies, like 1930s, 40s, where they're there. They would have like these credit, the credit cards of all the people and all the directors and all the people that did the movie and everything. But the, sometimes the uh, the title of the movie wouldn't happen until the end. Oh, right. They would have like a working title and then they would finalize it at the end. OK, or it would be really small in the opening. Like, like there's th- there's movies out there that don't even have title sequences like they just jumps right into the movie. And then, the you know, the final scene ends and fade to black and then boom, up comes the title of the movie. The point uh, is that it's it's really kind of just meant to be kind of a reward. Like, you know, you manage to make your get your character to survive. Um, so you get to give the movie uh, its title. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, like Citizen Kane used to just be called uh, Rosebud is a sled, damn it. Yeah, yeah that, exactly. That. Whoa, People spoiler, didn't... whoa. Sorry, sorry. Spoiler, sorry, spoiler for like a 60-year-old a movie, sorry. Movie, yeah. <laughs> Oops, I can't. I'm not watching that movie anytime soon. <laughs> I'm sorry, I destroyed that for you. I can't even spoil 10-year-old games. Red leaves Scarlet. No, no, don't tell home. me Red leaves Scarlet, no. <laughs> I can never watch God with the Wind. Did she get on the plane? <laughs> Play it again. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah. Hey, you know what? This is spoiler hour for people who like classic movies <laughs> for teens. If you're watching Turner Classic Movie on a daily basis, sorry, spoilers ahead. Should have warned you about that. Hey, everybody, so, the dirty dozen. Hmm, things go poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Seven Samurai, yeah, don't get too attached to all of them. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, anyway, that crazy clown. <laughs> that crazy clown. Uh, so, uh, the basics, that's, uh, this looks like it's mostly like flavor text to kind of understand exactly what the character is, right? Uh, yep. Crazy clown wants to kill you and it's got face paint and it's punderful. You did make sure to say it's punderful and yep. I appreciate that. Loves um, cracking back jokes. Yeah, loves cracking back jokes. Exactly. You'll fly too. Uh, then we get into the actual numbers and oh boy, numbers. So, um, body TS, brains TS, mouth TS, spirit TS. What what are these numbers uh, to me? What do uh, they? TS is target score. In the game, when you're playing a character, you have a body uh, trait: brains, mouth, and spirit. And body is everything physical. Brains is everything mental. Mouth is everything social. And spirit is kind of your inner fortitude, guts willingness to uh to just stand up and fight and just take it you know your the, the ability to take punishment or to, or to uh avoid fear um and when you're uh at the end of a scene every scene kind of has like um 
a trait that's called for you to make a check on. Um, like if you're having an argument, that's a mouth scene. At the end, everybody makes a mouth trait check. Okay. Um, and your your traits are rated between one and four. You have four traits. You've got one that's a one, a one that's a two, one that's a three, one that's a four. And the lower, the better. Now, that's wow. a little weird. I know. It takes a minute to wrap your head around it with the mechanics, but it all makes sense. Okay. So basically, you know, it's it, the idea being that your number one trait is the one that's rated one. Think about it that way. Okay. So whatever whatever's a one, that's your best thing. Okay. Um, and so when you get to the end of that scene and everybody has to make trait checks, um, you make whatever you, you have a pool. You start with a pool of 66 um, and that's your dice pool. And whenever you make a trait check, you'll roll your entire dice pool and you will need to hit that target number that we just mentioned here. Um, sure. Four or, and it's, it's always three, four or five on D sixes. And you're looking for that number or better. Mm -hmm. And you need a number of successes equal to the rank of your trait. So if your body, for example, is a one and you're making a body trait check, you only need one success on those six dice. So you're better at it because you're almost always going to get one good die. Most of the time you're going to succeed at that if you have sure. a one. Now, if you're rolling six dice and you're rolling your trait, that's a four at a target sure. number of five. Mm -hmm. Pretty slim chance that you're going to roll four fives or better. Sure. On sixty six, okay. when you wrap up your trait checks, everybody in the in the group uh, that's in the scene, you've got you you either succeeded or failed at your trait check. Okay. If you failed at your trait check, you narrate kind of how the scene ends poorly for you, how things go badly for you, and you lose one of your dice. All if right. you succeed. <laughs> you narrate how everything went really well for you and you make somebody else in the scene lose one of their dice. Oh. So that dice pool of six is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's a countdown to your character's death. When you are out of dice, your character dies. You get to dictate how they die. Yes, you do. You absolutely get to narrate exactly how your character dies. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> so when it comes to the, the scores for your character, how do we determine those? Like, d wh why do I have a good body score? And did I work out? Is that why I have a body? <laughs> um, it has to do with the character that you're playing. If you look at the other preview, there's a couple of, there's a few characters at the end. Each of the game, the, the game comes with 16 character archetypes. Eight of them are kind of your traditional teenage, young adult type. So you got a jock and a cheerleader and a nerd and a loner. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other eight are um, the kind of more, you know, the older characters. You've got a cop and a soldier and a business person and a teacher and a parent. The traits are already set for you. Basically, when you when you play a character, you're going to pick a name for your character and you're going to make a couple of choices about the character that kind of differentiate you from other characters of that type. Mm. But your your four traits are set like the jock always has a, a body of one because the jock is all about his physicality or her okay. physicality for that matter. Yeah, yeah, it's all all gender neutral. You can be you can a kick ass, uh, kick ass volleyball player, women's team or whatever uh, yeah. softball. Softball gal. You sure. Be a sports ball player. Yes. A sports person. Yes. <laughs> a sports I play sports ball. <laughs> Go sports. <laughs> and each character has uh, has two different quirks that are kind of variations of that basic archetype, and they they come with comes kind of some special uh, capabilities that come with that. And then every character has some stuff that uh, they can use in the game as well. And ex for example, for the jock, one of the things on the stuff list is a sports ball or sports stick of your choice. Uh, so you could okay. your character can be walking around with a basketball or a baseball bat or whatever. Can I use a uh, fencing saber? You can absolutely use a fencing saber if you are a jock and want to take that as your sports stick. <laughs> I like a saber as a sports stick. It seems it is. It is just it's just a bendy stick that you use to play the sport. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, sabers would really make lacrosse more interesting. We got to <laughs> get on that. <laughs> Sword, swords would make a lot of sports more interesting. Oh, yes, absolutely. I can't wait. I do love the fact that like all of the characters uh, with cards are autopsy reports. That's, <laughs> that's pretty great. That came from uh, my layout guy, Todd Crapper. Um, and yes, you heard that name right. <laughs> Todd Crapper. He's got a That's good sense of humor. That's what happens when you die laughing. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a good sense of humor about it. 
Um, he, he suggested we got talking about the character sheets and I, I, I suggested the idea of having the little uh, generic outline of a person so that you could like with a red pen as you were playing, you could mark up like what happens to your character. And he said, that sounds an awful lot like an auto- autopsy report. And I said, you're right, it does. And he went looking and found and did kind of the whole layout to make it a, an, an autopsy report, which also reinforces the idea that, yeah, your character's going to die. Absolutely. Uh, at least I know that I'm not getting out alive pretty much <laughs> like I, I the, the best option I have is that my autopsy report is going to be like post dated and I'm going to get for a while. You'll die uh, in the first scene in the sequel. In the sequel, yeah. yeah. I feel like you could do with an autopsy report, you could also get away with doing a living will as part of the uh, character sheet if sure. you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Who can I give my stuff to? Yeah, I want that saber. <laughs> I'm throwing Alex under the bus. I want his saber now. <laughs> Cause of death, saber-induced injury by unknown source. I don't know how you got that. Sorry. I must have really wanted it. So did you take like these archetypes from those movies that you really like, like those horror movies? Were you kind of working off of that, gleaning from that? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's just there are certain types of characters you see in uh, in horror movies and there's certain kind of variations of those characters. Um, And so I built, you know, the archetype is 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 about as generic as you can get. It's like here's just like this one word descriptor of what this character is like. And then the court kind of gives you a little bit of a twist to what that character is. And there's, you know, there's things in there like the, you know, one of the, one, the cheerleader has one, one of the cheerleaders quirks is the jerk. So it's the jerk. It's the cheerleader that, oh. you know, has a insult target and is always picking on somebody and is kind of just the jerk in the movie. You know, there's a, there's other characters in there that have like, you know, the everybody's buddy, they like, you know, everybody likes them or they're a sidekick to somebody. Sure. Um, so, so they're always seen with other character with another character or, um, you know, there's one that's kind of like the reluctant hero, the, the kind of the unassuming hero. Like you don't think that they're going to become the hero, but then they kind of pull it together at the end. Now, that's yeah. not to say that that helps you to survive. <laughs> no, because <laughs> the reluctant hero may very well um, get killed very early, but uh, yeah. that's OK. A- absolutely. You, <laughs> you only had this one movie contract, so it, it, it is not guaranteed. It's not even that your character is killed off. You were actually killed off. Yeah, it's Phantom of the Opera. Oh, there should be a Phantom. It's the Twilight Zone movie. Uh, there were actors that were actually killed while making the movie. Really? Um, I'm not going to get into the details of it, but it's a pretty gruesome situation that happened there. Yeah. Look it up if you're interested. That's like you hear every so often you hear about like stunt people. That's usually when somebody dies during a movie, it's usually a stunt person. Mm-hmm. But the actor thing is pretty rare. Like there's Brandon Lee that had, right. you know, there was the accident with the firearm. But right. uh, the Twilight Zone has a. Uh, has death associated with it as well. But <laughs> well, hey, hey, real quick, quick aside, as long as we're going to talk stupid movie trivia, if you want to get weirded out and wonder what the hell just happened. Watch yeah. Wizard of Oz uh-huh. when they when Dorothy and the others are going through. I think it's when they're in the uh, in the haunted forest and mm-hmm. everything starts to get spooky. And when, when like maybe it's when the first tree attacks or like when everything kind of kicks off. OK. In the haunted forest, the scarecrow has a goddamn gun. <laughs> He is holding a six-shooter revolver in, like, one shot, and he's pointing it around, and then it's gone. (laughs) I dreamed up a revolver in my head to battle trees. He doesn't need courage if he's got a pistol. Yeah, but he's... The guy with no brain is the one with the pistol. (laughs) I know. Well, the lion doesn't need the courage, then. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. It's hard to battle trees. Or Trent's. Is it Trent's? I think tree it's ants. officially tree ants or ants or ants, depending if you're in Middle Earth or not. Yeah. A tree monster would be terrifying. I, I don't, don't have I don't have a tree monster. I don't have a plant monster in the game, no. although there are some good horror movies out there with plant monsters. There's some also terrible ones, but um, little, like Little Shop of Horrors. There's Little Shop of Horrors is great. That's a, I mean, that, and that's got comedic elements to it. But there's um, um, The Ruins. Oh, okay. Have you ever seen that? It's the ruin or the ruins. I don't remember if it's plural or not. That's that's about a like a creeping vine thing that oh, it's it's pretty gross actually. There's like some <laughs> it's it's like body invasion by plant. There's also a plant killer movie called Splinter that is really good. Surprisingly good. It's a very low budget. It's all most of it's in one location. Really really good, very tense and some very cool effects. 
God, I can't remember. Was it Michael Rooker that was in that one? Uh, Rooker, you might be thinking of. Um, there's, there's, there's another. Uh, uh, well, he was, he was, he was Henry Fortune, a serial killer, but he was also in Slither, not Slither. Slither. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. Slither is the one, yeah, with the little slug creatures that start to infect people and take over their minds, and then some of the some of them become like they all get it's all big okay. body horror stuff. They all get melded together in this giant mass, and Michael oh, Rooker's okay. Michael Rooker's character is kind of this this just raging jackass <laughs> throughout the movie, but he He's ends up getting that character. <laughs> played that character play, a lot he of movies. The, the, the jackass character really well. <laughs> It's your old buddy Merle. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Mike. Oh Not man, Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah, so Mary here's Poppins. here's a question. Yeah. Um, do you have any sort of way in the game that you could like create your own monster? Uh, yeah. There's gonna be a little make your own monster and make your own character uh sheet, like a blank, you know, basically a blank version of each of those at the back of the book. Oh. Uh, so you'll be able to make those. Cool. This is one of those games that like. The book will be nice to be able to hand around for the to to run acts and scenes and to read the rules, um, and to just kind of take with you. But it's you know given that you know it's all character archetypes and monster pages and everything, it'll be one of those things that one of those games where it's handy to have the PDF so you can just print out the character pages right sure. from the PDF and print out like a monster or two if you're going to play, and then you can always print out copies of the blank ones and and make stuff up. Yeah, I, I know exactly what I'm going to make up. Uh, I'm going to make Michael Rooker as Mary Poppins. I think that is the scariest thing. <laughs> Alex, do you even get that reference? I know. You haven't seen Guardians Vol 2? Uh, no, I haven't seen. I'm so behind on Marvel right now that yeah. it's not even worth mentioning. Well, here's yeah. here's what you do. If uh, if you're not in the right place to to get caught up on all of it, at least watch the two Guardians movies. Yeah, the two Guardians movies are great. And then uh, I liked Civil War a lot, and you kind Civil of Civil War means I need to watch the rest of the other ones first. Sorry, uh, <laughs> that's why I'm saying watch Guardians. The two Guardians movies stand alone. You don't need to watch anything else. He's right about okay. that. Yeah, okay. you you can just watch the two Guardians movies. They don't really involve any of the other. Um, okay, so Civil I'm gonna go watch those now. See you later. Bye. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna miss you so much. Um, <laughs> I'll replace me with a clown for you, don't Whoa! Worry. <laughs> no, no, not a clown. <laughs> Please don't. You know, the sad thing is, since I can't see Alex right now, he might actually be dressed like a clown, and that's why yeah, I didn't no kidding, right? Yeah, this is, this is exactly why you didn't want your webcam on, isn't it? I'm waiting for him to do a, <laughs> you know, with a nose yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no! What happened to Alex? Yeah, I, I like the uh, the setup for this. So this doesn't take very long to actually play, as you were saying. If you know the system, you can play in about an hour to two hours, depending on how many players. Um, you really need about four to make it work well. It can sure. take as many as eight pretty easily. I have found that the sweet spot is six. That's my opinion. Okay. Six people killing each other. P six people screwing each other over so the killer doesn't get to them. Kind of. Now, do you do you have different subgenres or plots for the movies? Not specifically. I mean, each of the monsters kind of lends itself toward a subgenre. You've got the slasher. You've got like the body horror blobby thing. So if the if the players are familiar with the tropes of horror movies and with the tropes of those specific subgenres, you can kind of like the scenes are just prompts. Like here's a scene that's like I said, like about an argument, or here's one where the monster attacks, or here's one where the characters attend a party. You can take that scene and and weave whatever you want for for tropes into it. You know, just just play the cliches, or you can take the cliches and kind of turn them on their head and do something different. And uh, you even have a little thing about horror movie tropes. Use your tropes. That should be <laughs> that should just be a general piece of advice. Use your tropes, folks. That's uh, good life advice from die laughing <laughs> uh this is a game where i'm probably gonna die but if i'm really lucky maybe i won't die but uh there is going to be a terrifying creature that's trying to kill me and uh at least hilarity will probably ensue if i try really hard that's the hope great excellent sold just out of curiosity because you didn't uh, make the game all by yourself. You had a few people that helped you out. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about uh, some of the creative people that were on this, your your editor, your art and graphics people. Uh, we already talked about uh, Mr. Crapper. 
Yeah. <laughs> we, we already uh, we already talked about him. Um, but uh, Vincent uh, Harper. Uh, uh, yeah, he did the editing. He's going to do yeah. a proofread at the end as well. Um, I got hooked up with him through Todd. Okay. Because um, uh, Vincent has done work for Todd um, on some of his games. And so uh, that, this was my first time working with Vincent, but he's a horror movie fan and he was really stoked to get involved. He enjoyed reading through the whole thing and is looking forward to seeing the whole final thing. He'll be, yeah, he, he did the, the, the basic copy editing pass um, and he'll give it a proofread once it's all laid out and pretty and make sure um, I didn't overuse commas, hmm. which uh, as I am wont to do. Yeah, commas always find their way into sentences when they probably shouldn't, but I am guilty of using way too many of them as well. <laughs> And uh, I have to talk about our our artist because I just I find the art charming and disturbing at the same time. The uh, the artist in question is uh, Beth Varney. Yeah, actually, she's worked on all of my games. OK, she was the cover artist and also did some of the interior work for the first game, Murders and Acquisitions. Yes, um, she was. You could probably call her the the prime artist. She did more individual interior pieces than any other single artist. Um, and then for Capers, which uh, we have talked about on on Delve, that just fulfilled a couple of weeks ago. That's published. That's out there. She did the entire book. She did every single illustration. Yes, I remember that. And I really like the, uh, the the comic book style kind of graphics that she she put in this. She has a wonderful range of artistic styles that she can bring to these games. That's that's really rare to see. She's got some, you know, I've mostly asked for kind of comic book level kind of stuff because yeah. um, that's just kind of where my games went. Um, but mm. uh, yeah, if you take a look at her her portfolio, she she does portraiture and, and uh, kind of more painterly kind of stuff and also, mm. also all sorts of stuff. She does yeah. work, you know, mo- most of her professional work as a professional freelancer is in indie comics. So, you know, she's she's got that style down pat, like she can cr- she can crunch out a sketch and, and then do a line work. Um, off the sketch pretty efficiently. So um, she is working right now. <laughs> um, and I've, I've approved all the sketches and provided notes, and she's doing up the uh, the remaining artwork uh, for the for the game, which is mostly monsters. Oh, excellent. Um, and I should mention, you had so many lovely play testers, and I, I think that we are duty-bound to say that you had a bunch of players at CadeCon only because we, we might be sponsoring that particular <laughs> con this year. <laughs> Yeah, I played I played the game with a bunch of people at a catacon last year, um, yeah. as well as a few other conventions. And I had a few groups that had uh, like home games and like I, I sent them like, OK, here's here's everything. And I want you to play these two monsters and I want you and your group to play these two monsters and I want you and your group to play these two monsters. And, yeah. you know, pick whatever characters you want. Use a, use different characters for the second monster. Just try them all out. You know, did some tweaking and uh, the game came together pretty cleanly, actually. Yeah, and uh, is that similar to what you did at, like, uh, PAX and Gen Con? Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, and I do notice one other name in the special thanks, uh, James Intracasso, who I'm somewhat familiar with. Uh, what did uh, what did James do uh, in terms of the game? Uh, well, James and Rudy, um, mm-hmm. Rudy Bass was on there as well. Yeah. And uh, they their, their, their names are going, they're, they're going to be joined by some other names as well. Generally, what I try to do is I, I throw a special thanks out to people that helped in ways that aren't really quantified by all the sure. other stuff up above. And special mm-hmm. thanks in this case for James and Rudy, because they'll uh, we recorded a uh, an actual play of Die Laughing with uh, to put on their podcast network. On yeah. the don't, yeah. don't split the podcast network. There's some mm-hmm. other actual play people that are going to get their name in there as well. Yeah. Um, you know, like with with Capers, I had uh, the guy who wrote the article for me for uh that made it up onto Geek and Sundry. Yeah, um, he got a thank you. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's there's different people. The two people sure. on there, the, and the special thanks there, Matt Sherwood and Eric Wurzler. Those are my longtime friends that I don't see nearly often enough. Who I watched a lot of horror movies or bad movies with. <laughs> uh, Excellent. So they kept me on track for all those years that led me to actually create a game. Uh, and also a special thanks to uh, Slender Man. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 to Michael Rooker uh, as Mary Poppins. That's really nice. And then, of course, uh, a huge piece we should mention where Kickstart uh, backers will go. This is this is an early version. There's actually in the final version. There's more space for that, just in the hopes yeah. that there will be a lot of Kickstarter backers. <laughs> right. Um, I'm not sure when this goes up as we record this early, but uh, if it is um, Tuesday, October 30th or later. 
mm-hmm. um, as you're listening to this, um, and it is still before Thanksgiving, that means the Kickstarter is running right now. So it actually starts on October 30th? Day before Halloween, baby. I was going to say, I feels like there's some synergy here. <laughs> like you planned it that way. Uh, this ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> hey, look, folks, you like you like Halloween? What about if you had a game called Die Laughing? Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. Yes, it would. I sure hope people will find that fun. <laughs> what are the tier levels going to be like for the for the Kickstarter? Oh, this is the best part. There is going to be a funding goal, and there is going to be a backer level, and that is it. You get the game. You get uh, the. It'll be ten bucks for uh, the PDF of the game, and you can. You'll also get a discount link to buy a soft cover version at cost later, which will only cost a few dollars uh, plus your shipping. So you can get that if you want the physical book. You can get that super cheap, and uh, there's not a whole bunch of support material or or um, uh, additional stuff that, you know, there's nothing pad, nothing to pad the book out. It's like everything that everything that's that I've developed is ready to go. It's going to be in the book and I'm just keep yeah. it simple. Yeah. So this yeah. is a little this is a little bit of an experiment for me because my previous Kickstarters and a lot of RPG Kickstarters out there always have all that extra stuff. And this is going to mm-hmm. be like really, really tight and sweet. Just like, boom, 10 bucks, you get a game. This is how much you pay. This is what you get. Boom. Yep. Right out and it'll and it'll turn over very quickly because it is done, done, done. As we're talking, layout is nearing completion. Artwork will be likely done before the Kickstarter goes live. Nice. So it'll it'll be a very quick turnover. Okay. That's what I was going to ask, because if it's a PDF and not normally a physical book until later, then it seems like it could be done like relatively very fast. Right. You just want to make sure that the PDF and the, and the physical book jive. So given that everything's written and, and gotten a full edit, assuming the layout and the illustrations are put together, it's really just getting the names for the Kickstarter backers and getting those in there and then just running a proof copy and doing a proofread. And then, boom, you're on your way. It's going to be a quick turnaround. If I had to guess, maybe a month would be the yeah. best case scenario if we can get the proof, get, turn, turn the proof over pretty quickly. With physical books and print on demand, you're always at the mercy of how quickly they print the book and, and ship it to you. And one downside to this is that we will be doing that proof process during the November, December realm when uh, print on demand orders are higher. So it sure. might, you know, the actual print uh, of, of a book might take a little longer to get the book printed and and then, you know, shipping, I'll, I'll pay for the expedited shipping. You know, hopefully it's pretty simple. It's all done. It's just like it needs a proofread. So hopefully it'll only need one proof pass and then boom. So I have no doubt that you're going to be able to get that uh, to people in, in pretty quick time. Of course, you've done that with all of your other Kickstarters. So each of them took about six months to turn over, but that was primarily because they were much larger and had a lot, lot more, uh, you know, primarily it was layout and artwork that still needed to be done. Sure. Um, whereas with this, I'm taking, I'm biting the bullet and putting the money up front um, because it's a little cheaper to do just because it's a smaller game to, to get the, to get everything out in front first and then just kind of recoup costs on the end and use Kickstarter as a, as a marketing tool. Makes sense. Uh, and I'll tell you, even six months as a, a time frame for the, for the other games that you had is pretty short compared to a lot of Kickstarters that I've seen. I've, I've backed things where it's like, well, in about a year, I might eventually get the product <laughs> that I, uh, and I really wish that that was hyperbole, but it is not. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. Like if you back something in 2018, I might get it by 2019. So when you're telling me about these fairly uh, short turnover times, it's really exciting. Um, I did all of that on purpose. You, you know, did all I, that on I, purpose. I set up all the the way the Kickstarters went and how what was done before the Kickstarter. And that was all done so that, you know, I'm nearing the point now where I can turn this one over fairly quickly. And I can officially say, you know, I'm an RPG developer who's done three Kickstarters and turned and, and turned over each one of them on time or faster and always within six months. Yeah, um, exactly. That's, that's a pretty good thing to be able to say. Yep. It will be very good when you release the uh, the fourth one. Uh, which is actually like die laughing, uh, but in Capers era prohibition, <laughs> which is, is going to be great because really the die laughing part is is what happens uh, when you're running away <laughs> from people that are trying to stop your run running operation and navigating all of that. Yeah, a lot of that dying just involves getting a lot of Tommy gun bullets in the back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess that'll not, do it. Yeah. 
it's for some reason that doesn't seem quite as scary as you know pennywise it's not horror it's just murder at that point <laughs> <laughs> nailed it mic drop and alex was worried that i took away his one liner he found another one he always does Quick reminder again that Die Laughing will be coming to Kickstarter on October 30th, and uh, then hopefully you will be the one to survive the slasher film that we have created here today. Uh, On the next episode, Craig is uh, still with us, and we are going to be talking about a bunch of things that are very spooky for the holiday, uh, including some of the monsters that you can come up with on your own, uh, because there is a way to do that and die laughing. And uh, you can imagine the kinds of ridiculous things we came up with. Well, you won't have to imagine it, actually. You can just listen to it next week. If you want to find out more information about Craig's other games, we've talked about capers previously on the show, you can go over to nerdburgergames.com. While you are on the internet, how about checking out delvecast.com? That's where Delve lives, as well as Orbital and Attempting to Play. Any projects that we really work on are over there. And if you happen to, want to check out the Patreon link, and possibly even become a patron for the show. For just a dollar a month, our, our lowest tier level, actually, you can get all of the additional content. We have raw, unedited episodes of the show before I go and do all of my editing magic so you can hear it in in its raw, unadulterated form (laughs) from the beginning, Uh, as well as some exclusive content that right now you can only find as a a patron on the site. And I would like to thank our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dom Perry, uh, for uh, doing just that. You can find Delve on iTunes, Google Play, and everywhere else that podcasts are distributed. I was going to say sold, and then I realized, no, podcasts really don't get sold. They're <laughs> free. Uh, they are free. You can find them there. Please rate and review and subscribe when you go. That is always appreciated. And as always, you can find us on Twitter. I am at Citanium. Alex is at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. You can also find Craig on there at Nerd Burger Craig. So I hope everybody is enjoying this wonderful time of year where we get to scare the crap out of everyone else. It's uh, it's magical. It really is. And uh, hopefully no killer clowns uh, come your way. But, uh, you know, if you happen to see somebody in a hockey mask or uh, somebody in a fedora that uh, looks like they spent a little too much time in the sun, my advice is to run. Especially just run faster than the other person next to you. That is a key to surviving any kind of slasher film. Pro tip. I hope everybody enjoys that pro tip. And we will see you on the next episode. Goodbye. (laughs) That is, okay, that is hard on the vocal cords. I should not do that anymore. just wanted to open something up so I have it in front of me. Oh my god, crazy clown! <laughs> uh, well, okay, now I have something. Did you open the PDF, Alex? Yeah, I, I saw the, uh, the okay. clown well, dancing. That's great. Uh, it, yeah, and in no way am I getting uh, thoughts that Pennywise is going to invade my dreams. But uh, hey, you know what? Uh, anything works. Oh, it's ponderful. Sweet. Okay, <laughs> well, so at least I have...